Hey guys, this is Evan Dukas in the garden. Today I'm excited to talk to you about how you can transform any dead piece of property into a beautiful, lush, and living food forest in just three simple steps. That's actually exactly what we did here several years ago. Uh, we bought this property and it was in terrible condition. I wouldn't even call this soil at the time. It was actually this stuff called road base, which is compacted mountain, ro like granite rock and clay that nothing can grow in. There were like a few really heavy duty grasses and weeds that can grow in it and that was it. And the most amazing thing is to be able to implement this and, and build myself a food forest rather quickly, I didn't take anything out. I only added making it really simple. So let's talk about the three steps. So step number one, kind of like a house, is to lay down the, the foundation. And in something like this, that foundation is always going to be your soil. You want to build soil. And just like the most lush places on earth, if you, you know, go out there into the middle of a beautiful forest and look down, you're going to see soil being built really well by mulch. It takes a long time in, in the forest, but what's happening there is layer upon layer, uh, mulch is being laid down and this beautiful soil underneath is being, is being uh, structured and built. So what you wanna do is simply mulch uh, the whole area that you want to do. If you're starting with not just garden soil, but like a lawn or an area that is just so full of weeds, I recommend putting down some kind, kind of barrier like cardboard or newspaper, uh, something that the microbes and moisture will eat through eventually and, and actually pretty quickly. And everything underneath it, your grass or your weeds, are going to become like, uh, like food for the next generation of plants after that. So even if what you're starting with is something really bad like I did, uh, really bad soil and weeds uh, and grass, this stuff will begin to transform what's underneath very, very, very quickly. Uh, all those microbes will hop in, the worms will get to work, and everything's beginning to break down underneath. And that's why this is so awesome. So right away, get your barrier down, and then put some kind of rich composted material. If you could find manure, you know, uh, or, or, or any kind of other compost, even if you just have like an inch or two as a layer uh, or even less, just to sort of inoculate and begin that composting decomposition process, that would be great. And then follow that by layers of mulch. You can mulch it with any type of stuff. You know, grass clippings are great, leaves are great, uh, hay, straw, but my absolute favorite is wood chips. You know, uh, like we've talked about before many times in this channel, I love the back to Eden method because it just simply works. So check out those videos. But what, what you want is a good, rich compost like I have here. And right away, even now, you can see what's going on beneath that is this beautiful black soil that's being built and it's full of worms, full of life. So this is the kind of stuff that you want to get down first. Even if you don't have time for another several months or a year or two or, or whatever, uh, or you're in a rush. Either way, first step is lay your foundation, apply uh, thick, thick mulch, get that layer down so that you are ready to start reaping the benefits right away. So the next major step that you're going to take is to plant your trees. Also similar to building a home, after that foundation is laid, the next step is to have your structure. And that's exactly what, what trees do. They provide structure and kind of a dividing, almost like rooms, uh, for your food forest because everything that you do from then on is going to be in relation to your trees in their positioning and uh, you know their proximity to the trees you know uh, kind of like underneath the trees the, the tree here we have strawberries growing because strawberries in Colorado really enjoy a little bit of shade or dappled sunlight or a little filtering of that really strong you know mountain west sun that we have so they benefit greatly as well as uh, some wild garlic that we have down there. Trees are really, really, really important. They are like the landmarks of your food forest. So take your time. It's hard to unplant a tree. So take your time where you want to position them. Maybe, you know, draw it out. Consider the span of your tree uh, in, in kind of a circular shape. You know, just, just figure out how wide its, its reach is going to be um, because, you know, most sellers will always let you know how big that tree is going to get. Uh, and by trees, in this case, what I mean is, of course, is fruit trees, because after all, this is an edible 
food forests, right? So fruit trees are just great. If you have more space, you know, you can, you can start with something much bigger like nut trees and things like that. I didn't have that much space here. This is about, you know, 30 by 30 feet. Uh, so, you know, I couldn't come up with anything too huge, like overstory trees. These are more like understory trees. The beautiful thing about this system is that it is custom tailored to whatever space you have. If you've got less space, you can just only plant one tree if you want, just to provide uh, that landmark. If you have even less space than that in like square foot gardening, you can uh, take the next step uh, like, like shrubs and consider those your trees. So the most important thing is design it out, figure out where you're gonna put your landmarks, that is your edible fruit trees here, then the rest will flow easily from there. So the third and final step has everything to do with planting the rest. It's kind of like filling in, putting the finishing touches and then furnishing your home in that example. Everything is going to fall into the proper design and place uh, in relation to where your trees have been planted. And hopefully you, you planted your trees by now quickly uh, because you, know, you really wanna get those roots in the ground, you know, have them established uh, or, or begin to get established because they take the longest. But once you have that and you've considered the spacing and the areas between your trees, now think about the different varieties of plants that you want to uh, go ahead and implement into your food forests. Um, and what you want to do is, you know, to do a quick bit of research on positioning and the individual needs of each plant. So begin to plant everything else. A huge diversity of plants is amazing because the diversity is just going to add to that regenerative, beautiful, sustaining uh, system that is a food forest. So here are some examples in groups of plants that you'll, you will want to plant in your food forest. From kind of generally size down, you, you have your shrubs. And a good example of edible shrubs would be berries. And there are so many types. They're really important because they're big and sometimes they're just really big, like this uh, elderberry, this black elderberry here that's just about as big as my fruit trees. Okay, then we have vines uh, in the back. Only in the back corner, uh, we have a grape. Uh, it is a Concord grape growing along the fence. All right, and then we have perennial and annual vegetables. Those are really important. So peren perennial vegetables are a little less common, but they are really, really important uh, because those you just plant once and you continue uh, to get a harvest for years to come. A good example of this would be sorrel or back there I have some uh, perennial chicory. Um, or perennial rocket over here. I have Turkish rocket over there. Uh, I, I've even grown artichokes in here. So just things that come back from the root every year. And then you also have your annual vegetables, such as these young corn, squash, and beans that we have here. And we have cucumbers over there and tomatoes and zucchini and so on and so forth. Then also we have your herbs. Let's not forget our, about our, our herbaceous uh, plants. Uh, such as that lemon balm over there, or lots of wonderful lavender uh, that these bees are just loving. Okay, um, and then, you know, just many, many different herbs in here. We have mints, uh, different mint, uh, peppermint, spearmint, and, um, and we have this awesome lovage and borage over there. These really bring in your beneficials as well. Um, and then, of course, uh, don't forget about things like nitrogen fixers. Uh, like leguminous plants that fix nitrogen in the soil. So plants around it benefit just from being next to it. Um, and then we have dynamic accumulators uh, like this awesome comfrey here. And comfrey is really rich, sends down a tap root. And what you can do is break this stuff up and continue to mulch with this stuff. Because again, we want re regeneration, we want sustainability. Uh, and we don't always want to have to rely on bringing compost and mulch into our garden. We want our garden to make its own mulch. And that's, and that's what a forest does. Uh, also, we have ground covers, such as those strawberries. And then even beneath uh, the ground level, we have root vegetables like carrots and potatoes. So I hope that this method and these steps help you greatly, as they have helped me so much. This system works so beautifully because it works when I'm not working on it. Uh, and that's really the point, you know, in a sustainable and regenerative system, you want to work by itself. You know, you want things to work together. And that's what we get in a food forest. 
As you can see, this may not be the gardening method for those who like very tight and very pretty gardens, you know, um, with everything perfectly spaced out. This is going to fill in a lot like it has in previous years. Um, although this year I, I was really determined to make sure that I had enough walking spaces and so far so good, you know, but this is definitely isn't your English garden guys. This is the wild west. And especially over here, this really is the wild west of gardening because we are constantly challenged with a very hostile climate, but there are many areas, uh, within the United States and the world that could be really uh, a challenge in gardening. So I hope that this helps you because this food forest style gardening method will benefit you no matter where you are. Please feel free to leave any questions or comments um, and subscribe if you like this video and you want to see more like it. I definitely plan on doing some more of the ins and outs of things like this. And until next time.